kind of working as a volunteer for the Vegan Information Project. And this is that, uh, I think, yes, we'll get rid of that one. Now, the Vegan Information Project has been going for about three, three and a half years now, and we described it as a mold breaker when we started it. And the reason for that is that um, it's a grassroots group. And when it comes to street activism, usually what happens is that, is that the grassroots think very small because they, they don't have any money, they don't have any funds, and they obviously don't, often don't have any opportunities. And so you end up with like a fold-down table or a table somewhere with a few leaflets on and the banner around, and maybe that's about it. And now there's some kind of, uh, some things with imagination going on right now, which is re really good to see. But you know, the tradition has been very kind of stuck in the mud in a way. This is what we wanted to avoid, which is the fold-down table with a banner around and a few leaflets. This actually was only about two weeks ago in Manchester. Yeah? We wanted something bigger and better than that. And so we came up with, I'm kind of using two groups really here. One's called Vigo, Vegan Education on the Go. And the other one is the one that I'm involved with mainly, the Vegan Information Project. And together, we do this thing called the Vegan Information Day. Now again, going back to what I said before, if you see here, we've got vegan posters and banners absolutely everywhere. Nobody's trying to hide anything. People are not scared of us. You often get a queue of people talking. And rather than just having a couple of people on the table, quite often the Vigo people, they get 15 people out there for five hours every week in Dublin, talking to people, you know, giving plant-based samples. Now it's a really good form of activism. That's some of their banners. Again, you see the kind of, as it were, the crowd of, crowd of people. So there's people talking to them, they're talking back education going on all the way along. Here's a dodgy character, if you know who that one is. Yeah, visiting visiting uh, Dublin last year. Well dodgy character, he's not, not welcome back at all. That, that and then we, uh, we've got some plant-based samples at the moment. So if you want to do this kind of thing, if you contact your plant-based suppliers, like uh, Wildlife uh, cheese here and they also give mayonnaise they'll give you samples free okay and then you can have them out on, on the street and then what you try and do is make, make sure you know where the, these things are for sale because people will come up and go oh you know what's, what's the, you know this is great where can i get this so you need to know the answer to that particular question this is a particularly interesting form of activism for vegetarians every week we get vegetarians coming up and the thing that they're stuck on, guess what? Cheese! cheese. Right, they're stuck on cheese. And of course, it does raise that casomorphine argument, you know, which is the kind of idea that, well, maybe they are really addicted to cheese because I mean, I call cow milk, I call it car food, because that's what it is. I tell people it's car food. And they're getting, in a block of car food made into cheese, they get in a concentrated dose of this type of morphine. There's no wonder, there's no wonder they're addicted. But one, one great thing about this type of, of, of activism is if you think of vegetarianism as a gateway, there's lots of arguments about that, but this kind of thing really can shift them to vegans, at least in the dietary sense. But obviously, we talk about the ethics straight away, you know? One, one good thing about it, and this is one thing I'm going to develop tomorrow in my talk as, as well, is that if you take an intersectional view, a justice-based view, like I was talking before, when people come up to a stall and they say, what's all this about? Vegans tend to say, or give a list of things they're against. I tend to think that's kind of wrong, you know? It's, it's better to say, well, we're for justice, we're for non-violence, you know. Um, <coughs> when you put it in this way, that's a great way to start the conversation. You're starting it on the positive note. And they the, the ones who then say, oh yeah, but you can't eat so-and-so, you can't eat so-and-so. I said, oh, I could eat so-and-so, I know how to chew, so I won't eat so-and-so. That's the difference. You bring it back to ethics all the time. It's not about 
You know, like people call it, oh, you can't eat that, can you? So I could eat that, but I won't. That's what that's what you say because then it brings it back to the ethics. You know, it's not it's not a religion. Oh no, we're forbidden. We can't do that. It's not that. We could if we wanted to, but we choose not to because we've got ethics. So this is our single gazebo stall. So, as you can see, we're moving away now from the, the pasting table completely. This is a waterproof stall, which, as you can imagine, is pretty useful in Dublin. And um, we do have sometimes uh, sunny days. And now it means that you can have all kinds of features. You can have all your usual literature. You can start to have videos on there. You can you can really break the, the mold. You, you can have uh, handmade jewelry. You can do you can do all kinds of things on this. Uh, because it's weatherproof, if you've got the right equipment, which is a battery and something called an inverter, you can have lights. So we often we often extend our sessions into the night, as it were. Lots and lots of conversations, and that's just a picture of our badges and. Uh, I think like cards and stuff that, that we, uh, we give away as well. Now, if you're going to do this kind of activism, you might need a vehicle. That's, in a way, a downside of it. One advantage of a fold-down table is you can take it on the bus. So, and obviously you could have an environmental argument about that. But, so we needed to, we needed to get a van. So we bought a van from a vegan animal sanctuary. So it was great. We got a van, and they got 2,000 euros, although we haven't paid it, but yes. Um, so that, that was like a win-win situation on that. So again, you can start to see the kind of things we have. We sometimes sell these sandwiches, we call them the VIP super sandwiches. We just want to read out the ingredients, because it's just a, such a gas. This is one sandwich, wholemeal uh, bread, hummus, plant-based sausage slices, smoked tofu, um, Plant-based cheese, peppers, onion, mashed potato made with coconut milk, lettuce and tomato, all in one sandwich. Yes. They're really popular, you can imagine. And we also sell them for about half the price for people who get that kind of thing uh, in, in the shops. In terms of literature, when you've got a lot of space, you can do a lot of different things. So what we tend to do is we go for the usual things like leaflets obviously but these are kind of zine style these are kind of zine style posters okay so the old-fashioned kind of anarchist style things which actually people quite like so if you have a mixture of the kind of professional looking ones and the kind of more amateuristic ones if you like on there that's a really kind of good mix and in particular we, because we're an intersectional group, we have stuff about feminism, we have stuff about, you know, uh, food not bombs, we have justice issues, we have stuff about squatting, you know, it's, it's, so we took, we, we kind of across the board kind of stuff, if you like. This game, that's a, that's a pro proper zines, people actually pay, pay for those. Zines are a kind of like an unofficial kind of comic and story in them. Okay, I'll try and get through this before we run out of juice. <laughs> okay, so this is a mini zine. So these are brilliant. There are eight, A4 pieces of paper, and what you do is you draw a series of little kind of um, pictures on them and then you you fold it in such a way that it makes a little booklet. When you get halfway through the story you fold it again so the rest of the story reveals as a booklet. They're absolutely brilliant, mini zines, posters, these are the ones we tend to have displayed. This one taps into Father Ted of course, it's Ireland, you know, go on, go on, go on, go on, that kind of stuff. And then so again we've got the, the more professional looking ones, if you like, and then we also have got the more exceptional zine type ones. This, uh, if you kind of don't understand this issue, this, this is tapping into the work of uh, a uh, philosopher called Herbert Marcuse, and he talks about living the great refusal. In other words, refusing what is. Veganisms do that. Vegans refuse what is. We say no to the mainstream. We don't like that. 
Now we want something different. We refuse what it is. Display board, uh, which features down here. Go away. We're going to lose this in a second. So it's got the case on the rights there. And I've, I've known people spend 20 minutes reading that. You know, we often put the display board slightly apart from the gazebo because that gives people a bit of distance then. You know, they, they, they quite like that. The big screen, this is like pay to view. I'm going to really zip through these before I lose my battery. That, that's little DVD players. Again, a nice shot. Big screen that we had on one time. We do that. We, we, we now do kind of project, project screen onto the back of the gazebo. Now we've got a double gazebo. This is six meters by three meters of vegan education. You know, it's got vegan information day. And it's got justice for all on the other. It doesn't put people away. It's not. It's not a scare word. People come to it. You get crowds of people at these things. They're interested in it. And this is now one of our things at Dunleary. We've got a display board. It's called T Station, the main store. That's called the Anarchist T-shirt store, where people. I know that happen. <laughs> what happens there in the in the in the t-shirt store is that we go around all the charity shops and get plain t-shirts and then people come along and they can ask for the for the thing the design they want and we make it for them on the spot. And I was gonna show you a picture of the smallest one we did, which was about that big for a little for a little kid. And um, you know that's very popular, it's very community based. There's one shot I had of a person making a t-shirt surrounded by people talking about veganism, talking about the, the way that the, these things were made. And then the, uh, I think the final shot of all was a double, double gazebo which, which had um, all, all the kind of range of, of things spread out. So we're talking about, you know, it's almost like the size, size of this kind of thing on the street uh, by then. And then one unique thing of the VIP event is what we call the tea station. I've never seen anybody do this before, but the thing about this is it's a great way of talk, talking to people about veganism and educating them. What it basically is, is just a small table with some chairs around it, with some punk pots on, with boiling water and some tea. And the, uh, the punk pots, you know, the big flask, right? And what people do then is they're interested in veganism, they take the literature, they sit at a tea station, they enjoy a free cup of tea, and one of our volunteers goes and sits and talks to them about veganism. Now, if you're on the street and people are stood up, they kind of get jostled around a bit and they feel the need to kind of move on. If you sit them down in a kind of cafe kind of area, they might stay there for an hour. And we've got people now campaigning on the streets with us who started by sitting down at the tea station. Tea station is a brilliant way of doing it. It's very human, it's very interactive, it's really rich in sociological sense, but it's also just kind of normal. You just sit and what do we do? We have tea with each other and talk about things, you know? Another great thing about it is that you you know, if you're the kind of person who give leaflets out, you often wonder what happens to them. Well, we kind of know what happens to them. You have, you have a look around the corner, a lot of them are going to be on the floor. You have a look at the local bins, a lot of them are going to be in there. When people take the literature from the, from the store and go and sit at the tea station, they often will sit with a cup of tea and they'll read the stuff. They'll be consuming the information right there. We actually see them reading the leaflets. You don't normally do that. It's a great way of doing it. And then, if those leaflets create a question, there's all these vegans here who can talk to them about it. It's a really good way of doing it. If you're able to do that, then you know I would recommend it and include a tea station. The last slide was going to be issues. Now, obviously, things like permission and access are issues. Now, we're lucky in a way, because we live in Ireland and everybody breaks the rules in Ireland. And so, 
what we started off doing was we got permission to cite our gazebo in a place called Temple Bar. Anybody been to Temple Bar in Dublin? Yeah, very famous uh, touristy place. So for 16 weeks, we got permission to put the gazebo there. When that contract ran out, um, we kind of were looking elsewhere. We tried to counsel, they would be a bit iffy about it. So we just started bunging the thing up in different places. You know, and eventually, after a few months, you might get moved on and then you go somewhere else. So, there are issues about commissions. We're working on that at the moment. Also, it's a good idea to get something called public liability insurance. Uh, in terms of Ireland, it costs about 300 euros, so it's going to be 250, 230 in, in England. And basically, that means if somebody trips over your stuff, you, you're covered. So, you know, public liability insurance is, is, is really good. But the real point about it is that even though there might be some drawbacks, the benefits are really big because you can break the mould. You don't have to sit there with this size of thing and think, well, what do I do with this, you know? Also, we break the mould in the sense that we don't give any national group literature out. Everything that we produce is ours. So, in other words, it means that whatever is said on that stall, we want it to be said. We don't have to use anybody else's words, and we certainly don't want in Ireland for the money to go back to Kent or to, or to London. We, we want the money to stay in Ireland, obviously. So we don't we don't give out those. But if you want professional leaflets, it's not hard to get them now. This is the age of the internet. If you think about it, the national groups they make up they make their name on the grounds that they do great videos and some li some good literature. This is the age of the internet, folks. Anybody can do that now, especially if you buy a little bit of cheap software, but even the free stuff, you can do your own reflux. You can do professional stuff, you can do the zine stuff, you can do great videos. I mean, we've, we've had sessions here <coughs> all about videos. You know, video technology is, is going through the roof. Everybody's got a video in their camera, you know? Everybody can do a video diary now. I mean, you could do a video diary of your day and post it on YouTube tonight. You know, it's so easy now, you know? So, you know, when I say, when I complain, which I often do, about Peter, racist, sexist, they go, oh, but they do great videos. I say, well, yeah, that's because they're rich. It's not because they're good or ethical or know what they're talking about. It's because they're rich. But in the age of the internet, we can bypass all that. We can bypass the corporations. The big corporations, and they're the ones who are trying to slide back from veganism, by the way. We can bypass all that and grow the grassroots. The great thing about VegFest is that they're committed to the grassroots. More than anything else, and I know they've got some national groups you know, coming and uh, maybe presenting, but certainly got stalls, but they're really committed to the grassroots. Pig Freud is raising money for the grassroots. VIP benefit from that uh, uh, lately. And so the grassroots is very important. Anything we can do to, to promote the grassroots is, is important. And I say boycott the national group, but do the good stuff. Don't, don't just get stuck with the tables. Think outside the box. And that's what we've kind of done in, in Dublin, and it seems to be working. Anybody got questions or anything? I know you might, when I, when I give these talks, people say, yeah, but how do you get permission? I do understand that is a problem. And some places are gonna be harder than others. The only, the only way I can answer that, because I'm not where you are, is to go and try it. You either physically go and try it and see what happens, or, you go to your council or go to whoever, find out who gives you know, There's usually somewhere in, in every town, in every city, where they allow social movements and charities to set up, usually. You need to find them out and find out the deal. You know, how do you get in on this? Once, once you've got access, you know, especially if it's official, once you get official access, that's great. You can really expand them. You can have a, you know, Bells and whistles everywhere, then you can have your videos all, all the lot, the, the, the tea station lot. So again? In Ireland? 
Well, it's really, Ireland is really lucky, really, because like there's no there's no kind of national groups, so we're not, we're not competing. There's no, no kind of animal aid in Ireland. There's no beaver or whatever. So most groups, I mean, there is a group called Aran, which kind of pretends to be a national group, but really isn't. Uh, oh, you mean in terms of space on the street? You mean? Yeah, there is a bit of negotiation like that. I mean, yeah. Well, uh, what we've got is uh, there's a guy who kind of um, paints, does some paintings. There's, there's another guy who sells sold, sold his poetry and stuff. What you tend to do is you kind of negotiate your space. And, and we, what we tended to do was get bigger and bigger and bigger until they found somewhere else to go. <laughs> That's how we do. Yeah, we kind of just overwhelmed them, really. But no, I mean, if people want to come, we would create space for them. It's like a sharing thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm really new to this. Can you explain how Peter Sexes? How Peter Sexes? They're the porn channel. They're the porn channel, Peter Porn channel. They've got something called the National Undress, where they get the women to strip completely naked uh, every year. They, uh, they encourage people to go, uh, you know, go naked rather than fur. So, which is basically saying to women in the general, get your tits out with animals. Ingrid, Ingrid Newkirk says that sex sells. Well, it might be, but it's very unrevolutionary. It's counter-revolutionary. You know, rights is a revolutionary idea. Veganism is a revolutionary idea. You don't, you don't get there. You can't, you can't promote animal rights by trampling over women's rights. At the same time, Peter are not an animal rights group. That's the problem. They're, they're not guided by animal rights philosophy. Um, if you want to know more about that, come, to, come tomorrow. Yeah. Because most of the groups in the movement are not rights groups. We just use it as a name. Animal rights movement. But if you say animal rights philosophy, they go, no, oh, no, I don't want that, I don't want the philosophy. They want Peter Singer's philosophy. Peter Singer doesn't believe in rights. No? We're, we're in a really strange situation. If we were the human rights movement, it means that our intellectual leader would not believe in rights. Peter Singer. Yeah, he doesn't believe in rights. Human rights or animal rights, he doesn't believe in them. Now, when we're talking about rights, in the sense that I'm talking about, we talk about moral rights. We'll talk about legal rights right, given by the government, but animal rights is based on moral rights. So if you want to talk about that more, that's that's for tomorrow. But yeah, no, no, they they, they have a they have a porn channel. Yeah. Yeah. Google, Google it. Google um, Peter National Undress. And you've got, you know, and then in terms of racism, not long after Obama was elected, they do a demo dressed up as the Ku Klux Klan. You know, we can't get more reactionary and ridiculous than that. Because as, uh, there's a book out called Growl by Kip Stallwood, a good friend of mine, and he used to work for Peter. And they used to describe themselves, still do, as media whores. Right? Anything to get the media. And it's one of those things about, you know, all coverage is good. Well, that's not true. Not in a revolution, it's not. You know? But some of the stuff that Peter do is really crass. You know? And they're also incredibly rich. If they were disbanded, which they should be, like, yesterday, and their money was spread out in the grassroots, you'd have a hell of a lot more going on than we do now. There's no point in concentrating on the national groups. And that's a transnational corporation. That should be the first one to close down. Right. And the same moment just about to start doing small and how would you recommend getting more to help with the small person? Um in the sense you don't know anybody at all? Or? Yeah. Right, well in that case you'd probably um, have to suss out I mean, might be some existing groups, but also obviously you have to think about things like Facebook and the other social media, that would be a thing. But also maybe going around to any of the, I don't know if you've got, you know, vegan cafes or restaurants or vegetarian, vegan friendly kind of thing, where you can put posts, you know. What you really do need to do is you have to be visible and, and, and kind of like get people to come to you. What you almost like need to do is sell the idea. I mean, ironically, given the sessions that we just had, you could do a YouTube video 
and post it and say, if you're in this air, this geographical area, I'm interested in doing this. You know, I heard this brilliant talk the other day, <laughs> and, and and now I'm so inspired. I want to do this. Who who's on board? See, see what happens. You know, or even even write to the newspaper could do it. You know, they they might publicise it. You know, a local person wants to start this type of group. Well, that often works. Depends where you live. Right, we've probably done that, haven't we? Okay, thanks very much.